Hello, David Dominesi here. We have our master precision level that we're going to use to do a preliminary leveling on the surface grinder. After we level the surface grinder for the first time, we're going to let it settle for a few days and check it again. This level happens to be made in Poland. It is accurate to half a thousandths over 10 inches and it is a 12 inch level. It is made out of seasoned cast iron. It's quite heavy. The ground vial is accurate to half a thousandths per graduated line. It has phenolic or plastic inserts here and here for holding so that the heat of your hands over a period of time, of course it would take a period of time, the heat from your hands doesn't make the level grow there and there, making it inaccurate. So you hold here and here. Now underneath of it you have your ground bearing surfaces here and here with a V-way for checking round work. In the center it is ground out so this is not a bearing surface here in the center because there is a tendency to want to hold the level in the middle and if you hold it there long enough working with it during the day the level will grow here and eventually the level may spin on your work so you have to get used to holding the level on the plastic for sure there is a infield adjustment there in case you check out your level and it needs to be calibrated so how do we calibrate our level well luckily we can do it on any flat surface so we'll take it over to the surface plate and see if it needs to be adjusted okay here we are at the surface plate We've laid our level down, having cleaned the bottom of it, and we've wiped it dust-free. We've cleaned and wiped our surface plate dust-free, and we have taken our level and slid it into place. Now we can check the accuracy of our level on any flat surface. It doesn't have to be a level surface. Remember that. Flat, but it doesn't have to be level, because we're going to check the relative position of our bubble, we're going to mark it, spin the level around, and the bubble should be in the same relative position. So let's check and see where it is now. It looks to me like we are two graduations from the level line, so two graduations to the right of the level line. So let's remember that. We're going to spin it and see if the bubble shows up in the same place. But we have to put the level in the same spot on the surface plate. So I'm going to mark that with blue tape off camera and then we'll spin the level. Okay we're back now and we have the position of the level referenced on the surface plate. So we're going to take the level and slide it out of position, spin it completely around, and put it back into pretty close to where it was before. I'm going to let it stabilize, and we'll check the position of our bubble on the graduated dial. And we're just about at the second line. It looks like we're one quarter of a half a thousandths out of calibration, which is in the millionths. So for our purposes on the surface grinder, this is very well within calibration. If it were out to the point to where I wanted to adjust it, I would do so here from the side, where it's colored red. You use a small screwdriver and twist that ever so slightly. Now your level may be different. This one's made in Poland. So who knows how they do things over there. 
So we're going to take the level now over to our surface grinder and see what we see. See you there. Okay, we're at the surface grinder now. The good old brown and sharp 618 MicroMaster. This particular surface grinder was made in 1981 and at the time cost more than a nice house on two acres in the good part of town. But it cost me a lot less money than that. So I've taken most of the table apart. That's everything that has to do with holding the coolant where it belongs. And it's going to be painted and reassembled. Okay, our level is on. And let's see how far off we are. I would say we are very far off. There's the bubble right there. We've got a long way to go. What I'm going to do is put some shims under this end. I'll shim it. I've got a whole pile of them here. I've already tested it off camera, so I know the future. I'll put those under there, and we'll check it. And then presumably, if I put these under this foot over here, then it should come out level longitudinally. Let me get those under there and we'll check it. Now I did stone the table, cleaned it pretty good with WD-40. It's a very good condition. So I don't think that the table's affecting anything too much right now. I've got the shims under this side. That's not as accurate as just putting it under the leg. But I want to get close because this thing weighs 3,500 pounds. And I'd rather lift up this few pound level than have to keep lifting up this big surface grinder. Now if you look at the bubble, if you can see it there, we have it set to where we're two lines to the right of level which is one thousandths off and I'm going to leave it like that because our shims being stacked shims are not compressed so I have a whole stack of them here and this level is not heavy enough to compress them but when I put it under the machine they're going to compress and for sure We'll still be off, but we'll be much closer than where we are now. So what I have to do is take these shims and come to this side of the machine, down to that leg, put the shims under there, and in order to get this big machine up all by myself, I'm going to use my Simplex Toe Jack. Boy, that's one of my favorite tools. You can jack here and here. There's this toe here. It goes pretty low. Right here. So we're going to take it, put it under the machine here. Okay. I can jack it up and shim it, lay it down, we'll take a look-see. So let me get the handle on it and we'll start jacking that up. I have to go find the handle, of all things. Okay, I found my Chinese jack handle. And it goes in there. We'll, well... You have to pull this up here. Okay, that's pretty close. Put the Chinese jack handle in there. And we don't have to lift it up far. That should be good enough. Let's get our shims. Got our whole stack, and 
we'll stuff them under the foot. I don't want them to hang out. I cut them so they would fit under there. That looks like a nice fit. And now we'll let the jack down at our tab. And then we have to push down, let her go up just like that. If you move machinery very much, you want to get a simplex railroad jack or toe jack. That's worth its weight in solid gold. Let's go check the level. Okay, we got the shims in, and good news. We are exactly one mile away from being level. Level is in between those two long lines with dots. So we got a mile to go. Let's put some more shims under it. Alright, I've got this spring steel shim. It's not four inches, that's what I want it to be, so we gotta cut a little bit off of it. Hard to cut spring steel, but we can stick it out of our vice here and slap it with a hammer and it'll break. So let's get that set up. Okay, we've got the spring steel set up in the Wilton 450. We'll use our brass hammer. And... There we go. And we'll retrieve our piece out of there, but I don't have three hands, so I'll see you at the surface grinder. We have another shim to put under the machine, but I'm not thinking very well because clearly that's not going to be enough, so I don't know why I walked all the way over here. Let's go find some more shims. Okay, here we are at our little pile of shims. We need something to help us out here. Let's see what we can find. These are all pretty thin. Oh, that's where that is. Huh. Now, um, let's see. Well, here's a thick one here. Oh, here's one. Let's give that a try. We're cutting this sheet metal with our scissors from Zimbabwe. Because everything in Zimbabwe is bigger. Still need two hands to get it done. Okay, got that cut. We'll bring that over to the machine. We'll add this one and that other one and see how that does. Chinese jack handle. Give that a try. Oh, listen to that crunch. Let's go check it. Excellent news. We still have one mile to go. Boy, am I glad that's not coming into focus. Uh-oh. Now you see it. It hasn't moved at all. I hope we're going the right way. Let's see. If I lift it up over here. Yep. We got a long way to go. I need to look for some thicker sheet metal. Okay, I found some sheet aluminum. Let's stuff this under there. If it works, I'll cut it. Cut it to fit. Chinese jack handle. All right, let's see. Let's 
700 shims out. Bad idea from the beginning. New beautiful aluminum shims in. Oh, look at that. They're exactly four inches. Let's give them a try. Okay, we've moved a little bit. I think another one of those will bring us closer to town, maybe two more. Let's see. All right, I got a couple more. Let's get her up. Okay, we went too far. I'm going to take one out and I'll see you back at the level. Okay, we're getting a lot closer now. So I'm going to put a real skinny shim under there. Be right back. All right. I'm chasing it all over the place. When I get it perfect, then I'll show you. Okay. That is pretty close. I'm going to let that set overnight. See how it is tomorrow. And then we will level it the other direction. Crosswise. So that's a lot better than it was. I had to use, finally at the end, some shims that were three thousandths. Finally it went together. Can't wait for the old brown and sharp to get running again. Okay, thanks for watching, and see you again soon.